Hello, my name is Shahriyar Shahriyari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory linear algebra based on my book, Retrolinear. The subject of this lecture is matrices. We introduce basic vocabulary and see that matrices give us another example of a vector space. A matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. It doesn't have to be numbers. There could be polynomials, there could be functions, but for us, it's going to be numbers. And in fact, most of the time, it's just going to be real numbers. An element in that rectangular array is called an entry of the matrix. A matrix with n rows and m columns is an n by m matrix. The entry in row i column j, that entry is called the ij entry of a. So when we talk about the 3, 5 entry of a, we mean the entry in row 3 column 5. For example, here's an n by m matrix. It has n rows and it also has m columns. That's its second row and here is its first column. And the ij entry of this matrix a is a sub ij, the entry in row I, column J. Here's, for example, a two by three matrix, and it's one three entry is pi. The entry in row one, column three is pi. And here's another matrix. This is a three by five matrix, and it's a matrix that has only zeros in it. And for that reason, we call it the zero matrix. The A is the three by five zero matrix. If the number of rows is the same as the number of columns and it's n, we say that it's a square matrix of order n. A square matrix has a main diagonal. It has, of course, two diagonals. We always are talking about the main diagonal going from the upper left corner to the bottom right corner. We hardly ever talk about the other diagonal. Identity matrix of order n is denoted by i n. It's an n by n square matrix that has ones on that main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. I4, the identity matrix of order 4, looks like this. It's 4 by 4. Down the diagonal, it has all ones, and everywhere else, it has zeros. We are interested in not just one matrix, the whole world of n by m matrices. We fix n and we fix m, and we look at all matrices that have n rows and m columns. And we have a definition. We call that set of matrices either m sub n by m r or r the n times n. These are equivalent notations, the set of n by m matrices with entries in r. This is a set and each of its elements is one matrix. The question that we want to ask is, if you live in this world, what games can you play with n by m matrices over r? What we are interested in is addition and scalar multiplication, because those are the operations in a vector space. We have seen similar examples for rn, n tuples, as well as polynomials, and we now want to see that with n by m matrices, we can do the same things. How do we do scalar multiplication? If A is a matrix and alpha is a real number, then we find alpha A, that's multiplying the scalar by the matrix, by multiplying every entry of the matrix by that scalar. How do you do addition? If you have two matrices, both of them the same size, how do you add them? You get another N by a matrix and you add component by component. The IJ entry of A plus B, the entry in row I column J of A plus B is the sum of the IJ entry of A and IJ entry of B. B. You just take the corresponding elements and add them. For example, if A is this two by three matrix and B is that other two by three matrix, then seven A, you just take A, every entry of A and multiply it by seven. Instead of three, you get 21 and so on. And A plus B is also a two by three matrix and you get that by adding the corresponding elements. So the three and the three add up to six or the seven add up to seven and so on. The point is that we have an addition and scalar multiplication for matrices and these addition and scalar multiplication follow the rules of a vector space. That's the same as the rules followed by n-tuples and polynomials. We had videos on Rn and polynomials, and we showed that they have addition and scalar multiplication, and they follow certain rules, and those are the rules that any vector space follows, and that same is true of this addition and scalar multiplication of matrices. So what are those properties? For addition, if you have three matrices, all of them the same size, all of them n by n, then a plus b is the same as b plus a. The addition is commutative. It's also associative. A plus B plus C is the same as A plus B plus C. We have a zero matrix and the N by M zero matrix has the property that if you add it to other matrices of the same size, nothing happens and you get that matrix back again. The important thing is that we have a zero matrix. We have something that when you add it to other elements, nothing happens. Likewise, we have an additive inverse for every matrix. For every matrix, we have a friend or maybe an enemy that when you add them together, we get that zero matrix. And in this case, it's minus A. If you take a matrix and just multiply all the entries by minus one, then you get a 
matrix that if you add them, you get the zero matrix. For scalar multiplication, we have similar kinds of properties. If you have two matrices that are n by m and two scalars alpha and beta, then one of the properties we have is this distributive property that alpha times a plus b is the same as alpha a plus alpha b. And alpha plus beta times a is the same as alpha a plus beta a. And alpha beta times a is the same as alpha times beta a. And one times a is the same as a, one being the number one. One could write down a proof of these, but they are pretty clear. It's not really clear that these are that profound, that will, they will buy you anything, but they actually will. Because of this, we know that n by m matrices, the world of n by n matrices, is another example of a vector space. Therefore, when we study vector spaces in abstract, we can apply whatever we learn to matrices as well as to n tuples and polynomials. This next slide, I'm going to say things that if you haven't done linear algebra yet, you might not quite follow and you can just ignore. But just to whet your appetite, I'm going to focus on two by three matrices with real entries. This is a vector space that has infinite number of elements. There's infinite number of such matrices. But if you look at these six particular matrices, the ones that have a one in one entry and zeros everywhere else, they tell you something. These six matrices are linearly independent. We have a whole video coming up on linear independence. But intuitively, what that means is that you can't get any one of these from the other ones using vector space operations. By addition and scalar multiplication, you can't combine some of these and get another one. And they span the world of two by three matrices. That means any two by three matrix you can get using these six matrices in those vector space operations. By multiplying these matrices by scalars and then adding them, you can get every two by three matrix. Whenever you have a linearly independent set that spans, that's called the basis. The number of elements in a basis is called the dimension of that vector space. R23 is a six-dimensional vector space, the six-dimensional world. I want to say one other thing, which is that these entries are real numbers. And for first time true linear algebra, the entries should always be just real numbers. But can entries be something else other than real numbers? And the answer is yes. The entries can be anything you like, but to get a vector space, what you want is that the entries come from a field. What's a field? A field is a collection of numbers where you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide by non-zero numbers. In fact, it doesn't even have to be numbers. Any collection of elements where you have a proper addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division by non-zero elements is called a field. And examples are real. Complex numbers, I have a whole video on complex numbers, are a field. The rational numbers are a field, and there are quite a few other ones. Later in this set of videos, we will talk about finite fields as well. If F is any field, then the n by m matrices with entries in F are a vector space over F. We write it as over F because we want to emphasize that the scalar are coming from this field F. When you have the entries in your matrix come from some other field, like the complex numbers or rational numbers, then you also make sure that the scalars you use come from the same field. A column vector is an n by one vector. n rows, one column. A row vector, on the other hand, is a one by n matrix. One row, but n entries. If you have an n by m matrix, the transpose of that, that which I denote by A with a T on top, other people might have other notations for that, is an m by n matrix. And the way you make it is by first row of A is the first column of A transpose. The second row of A is the second column of A transpose and so on. For example, here's a two by three matrix A and there is its transpose. I took the first row of A and made it the first column of A transpose. I took the second row of A and made it the second column of A transpose. Here's a row vector with four entries. So this is a one by four matrix. And if you take its transpose, then you get a column vector. If you have an n by n matrix, a square matrix, then you call it symmetric. If after you transpose it, nothing changes. One final definition, if you have a square matrix, then the trace of A, which we denote by TR of A, is the sum of the entries in the main diagonal. You might wonder what this is good for, but it turns out to be a lot more interesting than you might first expect. Here's a three by three, a square matrix, and its trace is going to be the sum of the diagonal elements. You ignore everything else just on the diagonal, whatever it is, you add them here, three plus square root of two minus one, and you get two plus square root of two. This is the end of this lecture. Like my video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to be subjected to more math videos on your feed and keep hydrated at all times. See you at the next lecture.